Greetings and salutations, travelers of the internet, and welcome to the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna. We'll be your wise or not so wise mentors for today's audio adventure into all things storytelling. Hey there. Hello. How's it going? It's good. Good. You know what I'm excited about? What are you excited about? Not talking about The Hobbit. Yeah, that was a while. That was those three whole episodes of just talking about one movie series. So yeah, yeah. it'll be good to break away and talk about something else. And man, are we talking about something else today. Mm. What are we talking about today? The Shakespeare of it all. Oh. I'm very excited. Oh boy. So is this going to be like Shakespeare's influence on fiction? Yeah. Little, uh, little of that, little, uh, I don't know, what, what's the plan? We'll just see where it goes. I mean, there are people that have entire degrees on, on Shakespeare's studying influence. Shakespeare. <laughs> cool. So this will be a very condensed version of... Sure. Like the Shakespeare of it all. But I thought it was worth talking about. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, tell me what you've been reading, watching, playing. Oh, boy. So that <laughs> sounds way more exciting than it really is. Um, so still watching Critical Role, 117. Nice. How many are left? I don't know, but there's 141 total. And okay. And we're recording so, this in the morning, and I'm not doing that math in my head. That's really fair. <laughs> But you're like within like Oh I'm close. Thirty. We're like getting into the, the last story arc. Nice. And yeah. I'm really pumped. Yeah. Um, so yep, still trucking through that. Um We've been reading Dragon of Autumn Twilight. Yep. Which has been cool. And I did actually I briefly just for fun, I like read the first chunk of the second book of Gentleman Bastards. Oh. Um, which the title escapes me. It's something under red skies. Red sails under red it's skies right there. or something. Um Red Seas under red skies. There you go. And it's intriguing. So I might keep going through that. Nice. Um sorry, Great Hunt. <laughs> The book that's been on my need to finish list for like half a year. Um, It'll still be there. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I did recently start up an Audible subscription, so once I get another credit, I could just add The Great Hunt to yeah. the credit. It's really good. For Audible. And with where. So my wife and I are planning on moving soon. And we are going to be probably in an area where we'll have to drive a ways to get to work. I'm super spoiled and I only have to drive like three minutes to get to same, work right same. now. And so I will have more time on my hands for like audiobooks or podcasts or that kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to do more of that totally. later on. Um, anyway, also, you did you get the manga that you said? I did. Yeah. <laughs> so Anna said that she was going to Barnes & Noble the other day, and she was like, hey, what's the next Demon Slayer manga you need? And I was like, oh, I need number 11. So, and she got it, so I'm going to read that. Nice. Probably later today. Very <laughs> if nice. If not tomorrow. <laughs> um, let's see. Still playing the Lord of the Rings RPG, and I also read the first couple chapters of that Stephen King fantasy book, Eyes of the Dragon or something. Oh. It's written in kind of a bizarre way. It's it's written like a like a like someone's telling a medieval storybook kind of you know. Yeah. You know what I'm about? I can't say that I'm surprised at all because every Stephen King book I've read, I've been like, This is written in an interesting way. Hmm. And I've read two of them. So I don't have a lot of experience, but it's almost written in a way where someone would be reading it to you. Yeah. In like an old dusty room. It's kind of spooky, you know? Yeah. Like, it's probably intentional. The prose is intentional. Oh, for sure. <laughs> He's, yes. I, um, I would not, Stephen King is not one of my favorite authors, but I have a lot of respect for him. Yeah. He's not my favorite author just because his genre is not my favorite genre. Fair. Um, but if, you'll have to tell me how this fantasy book is, because maybe that'll be something that I could, like, mm. dip my toes into again. Yeah. 
Because um, I've read The Stand, which is a brick. Mm-hmm. Like, literally. Huge. A brick. And, is it worse than Les Mis? Um, well, I don't know. Look at it. It's, like, the same size as my, like, complete works of Edgar Allan Poe. Huge. That's pretty <laughs> like, huge. It's huge. Um, and then I also have read Lysi's story. Um, that one I've never heard of. It's real weird. Hmm. I mean, fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'll, you'll have to tell me Yeah. what you think of it. Maybe I can borrow it. It's good it. so far. It's definitely different, though. But, yeah. Nice. Nice. So, uh, and I'm still kind of playing Skyrim. Um, the thing is, since Hope and I are moving, that like has also taken a lot of mental bandwidth. So oh, I have sure. not... Like, in, in the evenings, I've usually just been turning on a critical role because it's, like, mindless. And you can do I can, other things. I can just zone out. Oh, okay. And veg. So you're not Or, like, scroll, <laughs> scroll, like, Reddit or something at the sure. same time. And, like, yeah, it's... Yeah. So, that's me. How about you? What have you been doing? Um, let's see. I am on... I'm going to start giving you, like, the actual volume number that I'm on on My Hero Academia. Okay. I'm well, I did that for Demon Slayer, so... That, exactly. So I was like, you know, I'm going to do that, too. I'm on 15. Oh, cool. Um, I read 13 and 14 this weekend, mm-hmm. and I will probably finish 15 today. Cool. Uh, because it's getting real juicy. Um, and I am also... Um, what else am I reading? I'm drawing a total blank. Um, oh, so for Book Club, we're on the Silver Chair now. So I'm... Um, making my way through that by C.S. Lewis. Um, it is, once again, not one of my favorites. <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. It's just not like... It's just very different from um, the ones that I really mm-hmm. enjoy. Which so. is funny, because I think Silver Chair is Hope's favorite. No, Voyager of the Dawn Treader is her favorite, which is also not one of my favorites. Oh. We've talked about this. I guess I mixed she up. and I have. I mean, oh, okay. not you and me. You, you've probably talked to her about it more recently. Yes. Um, unless I misunderstood her. But I'm... Pretty... No, that sounds right now that you say it. Yeah. Um, but it's not that... I can't put my finger on why they're not my favorite. They're just not... It's, it's not, it's not yeah. the Pevensies. Right. It's not the Pevensies. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, there are, like, some of my favorite Aslan moments are in that one. Mm-hmm. But it's just my over like the overall shell of the story is not my favorite. Yeah. So, um, but that doesn't mean it's not valuable. So, and the kids are really enjoying both of them. So maybe it's just me. It's probably a setting issue. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that is like a running bit now. Even in like, we'll be watching a show, and you're like, "Wait, what? What's happening?" And we're like, "Anna, it's okay. It's just the setting." <laughs> You're just not getting the setting. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, so we are watching Attack on Titan now. And there was yeah. a scene, there was an episode where there was a flashback. And I didn't realize the flashback had ended and we were back in the present time. Yep. Which I will still defend, honestly. Because there are two characters that look fairly, like past version of that character looks similar to present version of this other character. And that's why I was confused. Sure. Yeah. It makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> At the time. And I corrected the issue within like three minutes. Sure. Like it wasn't like we finished the whole episode and I was like, that was all in the past tense. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> it was pretty you quickly figured resolved. It out. You figured it out. <laughs> um, yeah. So Tech on Titan, uh, which is another anime for those of you that don't know. Mm-hmm. Um. And I feel like I'm reading other things. I finished um, Kristen Hannah's The Four Winds, mm-hmm. um, which is more of a literary fiction. Um, I remember you mentioned that last time. Yeah. I am going to listen to Shadow and Bone on Audible. I've decided to cool. get through that. Cool. So, um, I think I've just been reading a lot of manga, so that's all I can think about right now. Mm. Fair. <laughs> Um, but I'm watching, uh, Finish Loki. Oh, me too. That was a, about that. a ride. Oh, and I watched Bad Batch last night. Sorry. I haven't watched the latest episode of Bad Batch yet. It was continuation of yeah. the Ryloth stuff. Which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, super excited to see more of the Syndulas. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
Oh, I started watching um, Sells at Work Code Black. I've not seen that. It just aired this year. Um, but Is it it's, on Netflix? No, it's on Crunchyroll. Okay, okay. And so I'm watching it dubbed. Sinner, but okay. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. Wait, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm watching it subbed. Okay. <laughs> it's early. I'm tired. <laughs> we don't normally record in the morning. Also, I haven't eaten yet today. It's, it's just, yeah. Um, it's subbed, so it's just been fun. And I also started watching The Seven Deadly Sins, which is an anime on Netflix. I've seen that come across my recommended page so many times, but I've never actually started it. I've only watched two episodes, um, so I'm kind of on the fence about it still. But Does it have a big, muscly, mustached man with an axe? Not yet. Okay, let me know if that comes up, because I've seen that on YouTube before, like pictures of him and... So like the, it's from that. I think he's one of the seven deadly sins, but like, at least for this first part of the story, they're just trying to find them. Oh, okay. So like, it's a search and rescue, except not rescue, just search. They're just fine. Exploring. Seven deadly sins are fine. Okay. <laughs> but, you heard you um, heard it here first. Anna says the seven deadly sins are fine. <laughs> oh, no, okay. So <laughs> let me explain a little bit of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that does sound bad. That's not what I meant. Um, okay, so the like premise of the story... The, they're characters, uh, right? Of, yes, they're characters. Yeah. Of my understanding is that it's set in this kingdom where there's a... Like, there are... Um, I, can only, just want, I can only think of, like, the military presence are these knights, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there was a uprising at one point, and the most skilled fighters broke away... And they are known as the Seven Deadly Sins. Okay. And they have, like, special abilities kind of related to whichever Seven Deadly Sin they're associated with. But they're not, like, literally the embodiment of that sin, right? I don't believe so. Okay. They're just people that have, like, latched onto a shtick. Yes. Like, okay. I believe so. Okay. With my two episodes of watching. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, like, right now, I we have Wrath so far. Okay. But he does not look like you would expect Wrath to look like at all. Fair. So, that's all I'm going to say about that. Because it's hmm. kind of, it's like, I don't want to spoil the end of the last, the first episode. Okay, no, it's fine. <laughs> um, but, so it's like, so it's entertaining. Yeah. And the animation is really fun. Cool. But, I'll have to check it out. Because I think Hope yeah. has mentioned wanting to watch that too, so. Yeah. I'll have to look at it. So, when I say the seven deadly sins are fine, I just mean they don't need to be rescued. Like, they they're can capable. take care of themselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they're, like, hiding out. So. Pretty cool. There's a talking pig. That's always fun. Yes. You gotta love a talking pig. <laughs> yeah, and the, he's funny. He's funny? I don't know. It's funny. <laughs> they're funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, I think that's... I'm drawing a blank. I'm sure I'm watching or reading something else, and I just can't think of it. So. That's fair. Happens. Yeah. Cool. In fact, I know I am, and it's driving me crazy that I can't put my finger on what it is, but that's okay. It's all good. All right. Well, <laughs> now you get to talk about Shakespeare. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Shakespeare. What is, like, before we get into it, what is your, like, comfort level with Shakespeare? Like, what's have... your exposure? I have, uh, I read Julius Caesar in high school. Okay. And I'm familiar, did I read Hamlet too? I think, yeah, I also read Hamlet. Those two I'm most familiar with. Okay. And I... Did you not have to read Romeo and Juliet? No, not yet. For Wild. If, if I had been like a year later, they would have made me. Okay. Or earlier. I don't know. I fell on this weird off year where, like, they weren't actually requiring it for the year that I was in that English class. And I, like, totally okay. slipped under the Romeo and Juliet radar okay. where I did not have to read it. So. Okay. But I'm familiar with, I'm familiar with the story. Sure. And I often um, lump Oedipus in it, into Shakespeare in my mind, because I read that the same year that I read Julius Caesar. Okay. And they were both a hardcover book in really difficult to read English with explanations of what the words meant on the opposite page. So like I hardcore associate them together in my mind, but I know Oedipus is not Shakespeare. Right. 
but it is a play. It is a play, and it is a tragedy. Mm-hmm. So very similar vibes in my defense. Yes. Yeah. No, I think that's fair. Um. And I'm, like, I know that there's like a thing with Macbeth and like theater, and mm-hmm. like bad juju. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and First I play. know that like King Lear is a thing. Mm-hmm. And I know that Ian McKellen played King Lear. <laughs> because I own the DVD and you've yeah. seen the cover of the DVD. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Um, and I know that Shakespeare was not really appreciated in his time. Okay. Is that correct? Um. Or maybe not, not as much as he is now. He has had a long lasting. Impact? Yes. Is he like the Van Gogh of theater? Was he... <laughs> I hadn't thought of it that way. I suppose you could say that. Um, so right off the top, let's just, um, I'm going to like put a disclaimer for those of you that are like hardcore Shakespeare fans. I am aware that there is some debate on whether or not Shakespeare is the actual author of his plays or if he plagiarized them. What? Yes, this is a, it's a big topic. I didn't know that. (laughs) Um, What? (laughs) But for our intents and purposes, we are not going to get into that because everyone knows it as Shakespeare. But wait, can we dive into that someday? (laughs) Okay, sure. I'll have to do more research on it. Because what? (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to do more research on it. So we can I will that. lead the next one, and then the one after that, you can talk about oh, how geez. Shakespeare is... I want to talk about the Shakespeare conspiracy theory. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you shouldn't have even mentioned it, because now... Um... Well, I just didn't want to... I didn't want to go through a whole episode where we're talking about Shakespeare and, like, how magnificent he is, or whatever, um, and not mention that it's possible that he wasn't the actual writer. So he could have been a total scumbag. Yeah. Who plagiarized all of it. Yeah. Wow. But uh, it's more... But maybe not. Public, right. Yeah. But maybe did. <laughs> okay. But for well. today's episode, we're going to assume that Shakespeare was the author and... Okay. ...has received his just desserts and... Okay. Yeah. He's respected. There's also a really gross one about, like, a meat pie made out of people. Which one's that? Are you talking about Sweeney Todd? No, 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 no. Like, as revenge, <laughs> this person... Oh, what is it? It's like a really super messed up Shakespeare play that I can't remember what it's called now. Well, you keep talking while I look it up because <laughs> okay. it's real. Okay. Well, while you're looking that up, let me um, explain my uh, history with Shakespeare. So, okay. in high school, I had to read Romeo and Juliet... Um, we also read Hamlet and then I think Henry VIII, um, no, 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 not Henry VIII, Julius Caesar, um, we had to read in high school and our high school put on a Shakespeare play every year, Mm -hmm. at least once. Um, and I went to all of those, um, and so I've seen The Tempest and Twelfth Night and, um, several others. Um, and then in college, I had friends that put on Shakespeare plays every spring or fall. Sorry, guys, if you're listening. (laughs) I don't remember. I just remember it was outside, um, and that it was nice out. Uh, and I would go to those, and I also took a Shakespeare class with Dr. Thurber, and that was fantastic. So I've read, um, Henry IV, Othello, Twelfth Night, Troilus and Cressida, King Lear, The Tempest... Uh, the Taming of the Shrew, and Romeo and Juliet. So I've read a lot of them. Um, but it, that was like 10 years ago now, so... <laughs> uh, I do not consider myself a Shakespeare expert by any means, but I More am More so a, than me. But I enjoy it. Um, so, did you find what you were looking for? Um, not yet, but I know it's a thing... Is it Titus Andronicus? No. Oh, it is Titus Andronicus, the pie maker's tale. Okay, I have not read that one. So, um, is it basically Sweeney Todd? Because that'll tie into our part of our discussion today. <laughs> right, so Titus Andronicus, pie maker, the one who has to serve up the general's revenge in the form of a piping hot human meat pie. So, I believe 
I believe the one that I was thinking of was Titus Andronicus. Okay. Um, okay, so why is Shakespeare still popular? Uh, because... There's a lot of reasons. Well, let me tell you. I mean, do you have a guess? I have, I mean, I have bullet points, but I was just... I would, I would say because some people are masochists and like to have their heart broken. Okay. (laughs) And they're gluttons for punishment. And some of his stories are just, you're like emotionally abusing yourself by reading it. (laughs) Okay. You're going in a direction I wasn't expecting, (laughs) which is fair. Um, But also, uh, I mean, some of the, like the monologues are famous Mm -hmm. and, they're called soliloquies. The, sure. The characters are, I think, I mean, not all, obviously, but a lot of the, like, really famous characters have a lot of depth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the big reasons are the realistic characters. Now, you may right. say to yourself, they're not, they don't seem that realistic, but they have very um, real flaws. And, like, real emotional responses. Yes. Um, and they have real strengths. Um and the inclusion of those soliloquies allowed the, um, like, people that were viewing the plays, um, we read a lot of Shakespeare now, but it is meant to be viewed and watched. Um, but those soliloquies give the audience an opportunity to understand what's happening inside the character, mm-hmm. which that was not necessarily a common trait in theater prior to that. Hmm. Um, so... We actually probably owe a lot of thanks to Shakespeare and how, like, things are written nowadays as far as, like, understanding what's happening inside the characters' heads instead of just, like, seeing the, like, robotics of going through a day in the life. Yeah. We actually get inner dialogue now. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, His early plays were primarily histories, Mm -hmm. um, which are not the most popular ones now. But they offered clear commentary about the current political atmosphere. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Which I think got him into trouble sometimes. Sure. (laughs) I'm sure it did. Yeah. Um, He also uses verse, poetry, and drama and, like, ties all three of those things together, which um, I would argue a lot of modern writers try to accomplish with varying degrees of success. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, and you may not think that poetry is like a very common thing in literature now, but I think we place a lot of value in the way things are written and like the way it sounds to your ear, um, or like in your mind when you read a sentence, like I love reading a book when like a sentence jumps out at me and I'm like, wow, that was elegant. Mm-hmm. Like that was written so beautifully. And I think that's how poetry gets like woven into actual books. Um, because a lot of poetry is just like you're being so intentional about the words that you're using and how mm-hmm. you're using them um, and like the the rhythm of it yeah um, so we try to mimic that balance now which is cool um, it's really easy to find more information on all of this by the way like sure. there's so much reference material if you've ever written books on the topic for sure um so his works have stuck around obviously like we know that because the characters are relatable and Mm -hmm. the storylines are interesting um i mean how many adaptations to romeo and juliet have there been so many and like character like characters and other pieces of fiction that are clearly modeled yes or like how Lion King is 100% Hamlet. Yeah. Yes. There's so many like emulations of Shakespeare. Let me turn my page over. I have a whole page dedicated okay. to that particular thing. Sweet. Yeah. So most people realize that the Lion King is Hamlet. Mm-hmm. Because it's pretty off. It's pretty clear. If like, you're familiar if with If you're Hamlet. familiar with Hamlet, yeah. it's pretty clear. Um, so where else are Shakespeare plays rehashed? Um, so Thor Ragnarok... <laughs> Ragnarok? Well, yes. It, not not like in the full capacity, but it includes a play within a play. When Thor gets back to um, 
Is it Ragnarok? <laughs> oh, no, when he gets back to Asgard Thank and you. Loki's impersonating Odin yes. and having a play. Yeah, yes. you're right. Describing, like, the play is reenacting Loki's, like, rise to power, mm-hmm. basically. Um, and that is, a, that is, like, a big staple in Hamlet because yeah. Hamlet hires actors to put on a play that incriminates his uncle yeah. <laughs> for murdering his father. So That's funny. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Romeo and Juliet, super common uh, for just being remade in its own right. But mm-hmm. West Side Story is like basically copy-paste. Yeah. <laughs> Romeo for and sure. Juliet. Um, but I was recently watching The Little Mermaid and Pocahontas. I was about to say Little Mermaid. And both of those, I was like, these are kind of like Romeo and Juliet retellings. Less death at the end. Well, yeah, more saving. Mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> at the Less end. killing themselves. But, and... <laughs> um, you, right, the main, the love interests don't end up killing themselves. Right. Um, or being killed. But the it, it could have happened. Sure. <laughs> Um, which means that... That'd be a dark twist for Disney. (laughs) Well, but it's Disney. They kill people all the time. Kokulam was murdered. Not usually the flagship character, though. Well, no. Like, if Rapunzel had died at the end of Tangled, that would have been a big deal. (laughs) Well, okay, funny you say that about... Okay, so the Little Mermaid, in the original version, she, like, cuts off her legs and dies. (laughs) I think. Like her human legs? Yeah. It's like a way more, the original version of Little Mermaid is 100% more disturbing. I'm sure it is. Just like the real version of Pocahontas is 100% more disturbing than the Disney version of it. And Snow White. And yeah, all Rapunzel. of them. Disney has made them way more palatable. Yeah. Um, but. Less grim, you could say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if Pocahontas is kind of like Romeo and Juliet. If we're taking away, like, the... If we're looking at the Disney version of Pocahontas and not, like, yeah. the actual historical... Right. Like, what actually happened. Um, that means Avatar. Avatar, the big blue alien people. Okay. Not Avatar, the last airbender. I was like, huh? <laughs> Avatar. Okay. By James Cameron. Cameron. Um, because that is Pocahontas. Yes. Retold with big blue aliens. Yes. That means that that is also a Romeo and Juliet story. Yeah. Yeah. See? For it's sure. all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, and then She's the Man with Amanda Bynes. Oh, I've seen that. Is, is that the soccer Night? one? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I've but seen that. But that's Twelfth Night. Nice. Does Twelfth um, Night have, like, girl impersonating man? Yes. So then Mulan is Twelfth Night? Um, I haven't thought about that. Potentially, yes. Sweet. Um, I have that. to do a little more, like... I know nothing about the plot of Twelfth Night. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so The Taming of the Shrew, a very controversial Shakespeare play. Mm-hmm. Not very feminist. Okay. But Kiss Me Kate, um, which is a musical with, um, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank on his name, and he's like my favorite. He's your favorite? He's one of my favorites. He's um, Adam Ponape in Seven Brides Seven Brothers. Oh, I have no idea what his name is. Howard Keel. Okay. When you always get there eventually. Um, Howard Keels and Kiss Me Kate. Okay. Which is, uh, yeah. Problematic? Uh, Slightly? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the Taming of the Shrew is very problem Because it's all about, like, the husband, like, controlling a very independent person. Mm. Who's considered a shrew. Because she's not likable. Huh. That's a very, like, simplified, watered-down sure, version of the play. Sure, sure. Um... See how that didn't age well. Yeah, which is also like the same thing as 10 Things I Hate About You. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Okay. No, I have not. A lot of people have seen 10 Things I Hate About You, and I'm telling you it's just the taming of the shrew okay. in a modern package. Okay. Um, so, why does this happen? Because of the things I listed earlier. Relatable characters. Interesting storylines. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it happens a lot. And because of that... We And that's not even, like, taking into account the times that Shakespeare is referenced in modern cinema or literature. Mm-hmm. Like, um, Star Trek is, like, oh, notorious yeah. for quoting Shakespeare and, like, Picard. riffing. 
Picard. Picard like, does it all the time. Uh, the Wrath of Khan. I remember watching oh, yeah. that and being like, wow, this is, there's a lot of Shakespeare references here. Khan quotes Shakespeare all, all the time. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Captain Ahab from Moby Dick is considered like a Shakespearean tragic character. Huh. Um, cause I, he, there's, I mean, I guess if you really want to read Moby Dick, I have won't. at it. <laughs> That's okay. It's not one that I recommend to people. Have you read it though? <laughs> yes. I had to read it for college Ew. And, and I actually read it. Gross. Um, cause we had to do like weekly or like homework on it all the Call time. Call me Ishmael. Yeah. But it, um, has a ton of like soliloquy type inner monologue things for Captain Ahab. Um, he's very tormented, which is why he Mm -hmm. is often referred to as a Shakespearean. I mean, he's obsessing over catching this whale. Yes. But it's tormented. Yeah. (laughs) It's yeah. Anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about Moby Dick. Okay. That's a whole other topic. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and we often quote it without even realizing it. So like, I didn't realize that, um, I think she does protest too much. Like, I didn't realize that that was a quote out of Hamlet. I think I did know that. I didn't know it until I read Hamlet. Mm -hmm. Um, You probably knew it because I probably talked about it. (laughs) Um, That's fair. (laughs) As a senior in high school. Uh Because I just remember, like, thinking that that quote meant one thing. Like, oh, she's protesting and she actually, like, likes that person and blah. But it's actually like, oh, no, the queen is aware that her current husband who is the brother of her former husband, murdered her husband. <laughs> hmm. like, it's way more sinister than just like... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's complaining. That must mean that... Oh, she, whatever. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and like a lot of... Well, Shakespeare created a lot of words that... Right, I was going to ask about that. Like he invented a lot of words mm-hmm. that aren't used like anywhere else. Right. Right. But they're used all the time now. Right. Like they're. They were new though. They're a very active part in our current lexicon. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is. Are there any examples? Um, I think the most, like the one that's sticking out in my brain the most is important. Important? Mm-hmm. He invented the word important? Mm-hmm. That blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah, there's like you can look up lists of words that Shakespeare invented, and you'd be your mind would be blown. I didn't br- I didn't bring any of that with me because I wasn't expecting to get into that. Because <laughs> using the word import, mm-hmm. like this is a vital import, mm-hmm. like that was normal, right? Mm-hmm. But he just turned it into important. Mm-hmm. Huh. I'm assuming. Wow. That that's how that happened. Well, if anyone has any other examples of words that Shakespeare invented that we currently use. So when we when we revisit Shakespeare and talk about his potential conspiracy theories, I will bring a list of words. Okay. That or maybe good. maybe next week I'll I'll I wasn't expecting to get into like what exactly like next which podcast. words. <laughs> Not next week. Yeah, next podcast. Ha, you did um, the thing I always do. I did. <laughs> I'll bring it I'll 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 bring a list and we can quickly go through some of those. Cool. Um, Fun. yeah. And I feel like I'm getting, time? I'm getting like really fascinated with the things that you did not expect to go. Yes. <laughs> actually do. like he invented words like what, or what he might not have written them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are. The two things that you were not prepared to dive into yeah. are the two things that I'm yeah. latching onto. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. I suppose we could pause and I could it's go funny. research and then we could no, come back to it. Fine. But, um, I just find it amusing. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Shakespeare is the inclusion of the character Falstaff. Have you heard about Falstaff? I've heard the name. Which play is... Or which, what are they from? He, this character, is in multiple plays. Oh. Um, and he plays the role of the fool. Oh, okay. So, um... The jester. Yes. But... That's probably a trope that Shakespeare started having yes. jesters. Probably. I don't want to give him too much credit, but okay. it's very possible that he is yeah. the origin of that. Um, but the Falstaff character in particular in Shakespeare often offers the most poignant 
commentary on what's happening in the play. Like, he'll be off to the side, kind of a casual observer, Mm -hmm. and then he'll interject and say something that's, like, super significant um, and very wise. Which is a nice juxtaposition, because this character, when you look at, like, um, I'm thinking specifically in King Lear, um, like, you have the king and his three daughters, and then you have Falstaff, who is just, like, the... Kooky jester. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not a significant person, in, supposedly, in this storyline. Um, but he will be, like, the most honest, like, explanation of what's happening. hmm Which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's very, like, this juxtaposition is critical in the storytelling. Um, and it also is, like, very thought-provoking for the viewer mm-hmm. to, like, have that. I feel like that's kind of a trope where the character that you've kind of underestimated as far as like mental capacity or Mm -hmm. wisdom will like chime in with something really insightful and kind of take everyone off guard. Yeah. I can't think of any specific examples off the top of my head. So I'm thinking of like in the Hunchback of Notre Dame, the Disney version. Sure. The Joker is kind of like the... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. He's the narrator essentially. Yeah. Which you could look at Falstaff as the narrator of a lot of Shakespeare's plays. Mm -hmm. Because the way he interjects. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was really cool. We had, um, in my Shakespeare class, we spent a lot of time talking about Falstaff and his significance when he would pop up. We'd be like, oh my gosh, it's Falstaff. Mm-hmm. He's here. <laughs> Again. Falstaff. <laughs> Is it the same name in all the plays, too? Um, sometimes it's the fool, but it's the same character. Okay. That's funny. Yeah. I mean... He gets around. Yeah. Same, same character. I don't know. What are the time frames of these plays, though? Are they... It's not actually the same character, but it's the same name like what if fulfilling the same role. What if Falstaff is Well, the like... histories take place over, like... And I don't know that Falstaff's in all the histories or not. I'm just saying Falstaff is immortal. That's the conspiracy oh. theory that I... <laughs> I think Dr. Thurber would love to read an essay where you make that claim. Yeah. Yeah. He's like some immortal deity, probably some kind of chaotic fae or something. Like... <laughs> sure. Yeah, I don't know if he's in Macbeth. I haven't read Macbeth. Puppeteering. But that would, like... Macbeth would be the play where Chaotic Fae would for sure exist. Sure. Is that Scotland? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um... Or maybe Shakespeare is Falstaff. Well, yeah. You could totally make that argument. He's poking fun at himself. Making himself the jester. I think I, my impression is that Shakespeare probably took himself pretty seriously. but. Fair enough. Or maybe he was trying to tell us that he's a charlatan because he didn't actually write the plays. And that's why he cast himself as Falstaff. Maybe. The court jester. Again, another great essay topic. You should go back to college for literature and just study Shakespeare. (laughs) (laughs) You would have so much fun. (laughs) Are you loving these hot takes that I'm spitting out? No, they're great. (laughs) I mean, I'm pretty sure that... Sorry, creaky chair. I'm pretty sure that a lot of them uh, came up in class. I'm sure they all already exist. <laughs> but that doesn't mean. One. But that doesn't mean that they're not worth you exploring. Sure. So have at it, dude. Cool. Yeah. Just because somebody else already wrote an essay doesn't mean that you can't research it yourself and. No. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, I would reference those other essays. I'm just saying, I might not surprise anyone. <laughs> Well, who knows? It depends on our listeners and how attuned they are to Shakespeare. Whether That's or not fair. That's fair. They're feeling shocked. Um, yeah. I think that Shakespeare is one of the most often translated pieces of classical literature. Hmm. Um, I think it's been translated into like most languages, which is really isn't interesting. It, isn't it like books that have been translated most often? It's like number one Bible followed closely by Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which Shakespeare play is your favorite? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. Because really, I've only got a couple to pull from. Um, so, like, I have to say Julius Caesar, even though I've... Okay. I don't have that's a fair. super strong attachment to Julius Caesar. Julius except for, Caesar's like, great. The seizure memes, like the et tu brute. <laughs> yeah. The Ides of March. Beware the Ides of Beware March. The, I think of that every my year. My birthday's in March, so. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> yeah. 
Um, let's see. I think my favorite is probably, this is very basic of me. Are you going to say Romeo and Juliet? No. Okay. Hamlet. That would be the most basic. Okay, Hamlet's more acceptable. Thank you. Um, Actually, now that I think about it, I would probably choose Hamlet over Julius Caesar. Is that one of the ones you've read? I, now that I think about it, I have read it. Julius Caesar was okay. the first one I read, though. Okay. So that one, like, sticks most in my mind. Mm -hmm. But I did read Hamlet. And I did have to memorize a good chunk of that soliloquy. Hamlet's third soliloquy. Yeah. The to be or not to be. Mm -hmm. I had to memorize the whole thing. I don't have it memorized anymore. I see. Whenever I'm like... I can do like the first chunk. Whenever I'm preparing some sort of meat... Oh. That's like a... Like for dinner. And I've got like a... Like a dry rub. <laughs> I'm always like... Oh. Aye, there's the rub. <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this? That's I'm, perfect. <laughs> I'm like... I've got like a rub on like some steak or like some pork chops. I'm like, aye, there's the rub. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. That's perfect. <laughs> that oh my that gosh. statement just always struck me as amusing. I don't know. Yeah. It's just such a bizarre... Because we don't use that word that way ever anymore. There's the no. rub. Like, there's the the truth of the matter or whatever right. it meant back then. Yeah. No, not very often. Everyone says that. I'm going to start saying it now. No one I know says that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start saying it. Anyway. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, I think Hamlet... Um, and there's an Ophelia movie that I just saw on Netflix. Oh. I haven't watched it yet, but I saw it. I'm going to watch it. I'm very excited about it. It has cool. Daisy Ridley in it. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that one now. I um, just mentioned it. I'll watch it and let you all know if it's worth watching or not. Fair enough. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I really enjoy Hamlet um, and his character's journey. Mm -hmm. So, How about Midsummer Night's Dream? Um... I have seen that one. I've only ever seen it performed times. by high schoolers. I've seen it several times, but I get it confused with A Midsummer's Night Dream and Twelfth Night get like muddily in my brain. Oh, okay. Um, I know it's supposed to be a comedy, right? Mm-hmm. I, I only mention it because I've I've heard that that one's popular. And T the Tempest, those three get mixed up in my brain. The Tempest is they're on an island after a shipwreck. Oh, interesting. So not that one. Um, Twelfth Night. Midsummer Night's Dream is the one with, like, their... Well, let me look at which one it... I think there's, like, fairies and stuff. And there's, like, matchmaking happening, but they end up with someone you wouldn't expect. Yes. It's comedy. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I was going through all the different like summaries in my brain of like which one is this one? Which I was trying to. I one? wasn't. I wasn't sure if you were trying to like think of what your opinion was of it, or if you were trying to like figure out which one it was. But both. Once I figured out, oh, she's trying to figure out which one it is. I can help with this. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, um, I remember thinking that one's really funny, and I think my college friends also did a version of that play. Cool. That's the one with Puck, right? Yeah. 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 That sounds familiar. Um, it has like, and there's twins in it, question mark. That also sounds familiar. Um, yeah, that one's fun. Fair, <laughs> the, fair enough. Um, it's funny because Unless... the comedies are usually, um, like a very s limited cast in a small space. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Like the Tempest, like they're on an island. There's like three people. Yeah. Maybe more. Not very many people. And Gilligan's Island. Yeah, yeah. Is emulating Tempest? I suppose you could definitely make the argument that it has taken the bones of Tempest. Lost? Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, lost. <laughs> that is something my brain was not expecting to think about today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a mess. Uh. Um <laughs> We should talk about that sometime because I we haven't should. seen the whole thing. You haven't? No. Oh man. But I'd, I'd totally be down to for you to. I'm. Not, I don't think I'm gonna watch it. So. Okay. We, you can spoil it for me. We can talk about all the many plot issues in Lost. I haven't watched it in a very long time. But. Fair enough. Yeah, we could definitely talk about Lost. There's a lot to talk about there. Um, <laughs> so, what's your impression of a Midsummer's Night 
A Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, I remember almost nothing of the actual plot. Just oh. what I told you was what I remember. Okay. I, <laughs> there's it, fairies and there's couples and it was funny and yeah. I laughed and but it, it doesn't it didn't like stick in my brain as much. I also didn't yeah. read it. I was just watching a uh, high school play version of it, so Yeah, I don't think I've read that one. Um I'm looking at my stack of Shakespeare over there and it is not one of the ones in the stack. But um I think that it is some of my friends' favorites. Because that's the one yeah. that has um, Queen Titiana. Mm. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've heard it talked about. Titania? Who knows? <laughs> I've heard it. It's Shakespeare, man. Who knows? Yeah. I've, I've heard it talked about a lot by people who like Shakespeare, so I was mm-hmm. just curious what, it's a your, fun one. what your take was. It is a fun one. That's my take. Cool. I definitely gravitate more towards the romantic tragedies. Which is yeah. Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet. Because and you are one of the King Lear. villains for punishment. We just... I like <laughs> the way that Shakespeare looks at the human condition. Yep. Which is not to say that it doesn't happen in the comedies too, but the way he does in the romantic tragedies are really insightful. I think You're it's really at me. I think it's really well, just because there's there's like a stereotype with the hardcore Shakespeare lovers, you know, uh-huh. where they're like, I don't know, almost kind of hipstery about it. Oh, no, I'm not. And, and like, Do you, are you getting the impression that I am? No, okay. no, <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I don't lump you in with, with that group. Okay. Like, you know, you're knowledgeable, but you're not like, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for. You're not super like entrenched. Right. But, um... I appreciate it's how the information and knowledge of Shakespeare has influenced my ability to look at other pieces of fiction and other cinematic creations. Yeah. And it's influence that it's had on creating story. Yeah. For sure. But, so what were you going to say about the, the hipster, Shakespeare hipsters? Well... I don't want to offend anyone, but the thing is like, if you're, if you're in a group, if you're, so say you're like in a group setting, right. Uh And you're all going around saying what your favorite book was. If someone said. Oh, of all time. Yeah. Oh, okay. If, if someone said a Shakespeare play, I would be like pretentious. (laughs) I, okay. Here's what my response to that would be. Okay. You're wrong. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because it's not a book, it's a play. <laughs> right. When also, anyone anyone who is a like true Shakespeare fanatic would agree, I'm probably pigeonholing us, and I'm sorry, but would agree that the way you're intended to enjoy Shakespeare is on a stage. Sure. And okay, let's say allowing the actors to portray the characters is a significant part of the story. And so if you're just reading it, you're just getting the bare bones. You're not getting the full experience. That's true. So if someone lists Shakespeare as their favorite book, they're wrong. There you go. You heard it here. Hot take. Um, or let's okay. So then, but I think, but I think your assumption of them as being pretentious is accurate. Like they're very. Yeah, I don't even good. like when I think about like what my favorite books are. My brain doesn't even like list Shakespeare as a potential option. Yeah. Because it's a different category. Yeah. Um, now, if you were talking to like a group of theater kids and you asked them what their favorite play was, mm-hmm. um, even if it's ones they haven't seen, they've just read them, I think that it would be valid for one of them to pick out a Shakespeare, although I don't know that they would. Yeah. I, because I there's guess so, it just depends there's on... There's so many play options. It just depends on the group that you're in. Yeah. I mean, I have some friends that would definitely pick a, a Shakespeare play. But that's because that's most of what their Mm -hmm. theater experience has been fair enough like i do have friends that genuinely think midsummer night's dream is their favorite play which is awesome i love those people Mm -hmm. their kids have cool names (laughs) okay (laughs) good for them (laughs) yeah (laughs) so do you have any other shakespeare questions this is probably going to be a shorter episode which is fine what's uh, your least favorite? 
Oh. Which Shakespeare play do you Henry hate the, the most? Henry IV. Huh? Henry the Fourth. It's just so boring. I don't even know if I read the whole thing. <laughs> Fair. It has two parts. We only read part one. Um, I don't think I read all of it. I could so. give you a least favorite. That's fair. I mean, I could say Titus Andronicus because there's apparently some super messed up stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> um, I don't love Romeo and Juliet. It's not one of my favorites, but I don't hate it like some people do. Right. Um, I, it's a lot of crap for... Some people hate it? Yeah. Hmm. It gets a lot of crap for like young love, but... Oh, because you're like 16, 15, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And they die for each other. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, that's a little cringe. <laughs> I do think that there's probably an argument to be made that, like, freshmen in high school shouldn't necessarily be reading it. Because they're just going to, like, imprint themselves. They're going to, like, self-insert. Mm-hmm. And, like, self-insert their own high school romance right. into Romeo and Juliet. And, and make it into this big, epic tragedy if it doesn't work out. Right. Which was not the point of Romeo and Juliet. They're going to be the next West Side Story. Yeah, no, I mean, like, when you when you look at what Romeo and Ju- Juliet is actually doing, it's talking about how classism is faulty. Right. Like, these people um, love each other, soulmates, and because of stupid social constructs, they couldn't be together. Right. And stupid, like, family feuds. Right. Um, so, probably a little headier than a freshman in high school is capable of tackling... But I also think that's probably true of most Shakespeare. I don't necessarily think that freshmen in high school should be reading it. I used to think so. But I've kind of changed my mind a little bit. I think save it for upperclassmen. That's how you know you're old. <laughs> yeah, true story. Also, when you start watching <laughs> Little Mermaid and agreeing with King Triton, not Ariel. Yeah, true story. Ariel was out of her mind. She totally was. King Triton was so much more patient than he could have been. Right. I mean, she literally went to a sea witch. Yeah. And was like, yeah, give me legs. I can give away my voice. Also, Ariel formed an unhealthy attachment to a person that she saw for five seconds. Super obsessive. And look at, look at, she had a statue of the guy in her little human world shrine. Right? Was that a statue of him? Yeah, because it fell off the boat in the ship when they were... And she saved him. Just saying, Ariel's low-key a stalker. <laughs> Fair. And Eric is low-key dumb for not <laughs> recognizing yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's our fun Shakespeare stuff. Yeah. Tune in next time we talk about Shakespeare to hear about how maybe Shakespeare didn't actually write any of the plays. Yeah. Do you want to head that one up? Do you want to do the research? Okay, yeah. I'll... Okay. I'll bring the list of words. Maybe... I don't know, maybe research. it'll be next time. We'll see. We'll see if it's next time. Okay. I'll have to, I'll, oh, I'll be clickety-clackety on my keyboard. <laughs> all the Googles and all the... <laughs> <laughs> the Googles. <laughs> yeah. All the, all the, all the articles that I can muster there to support go. the claim that Shakespeare is a fraud. Okay. He is Falstaff. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It makes me very happy. All right. <laughs> well, this was fun. This was fun. I enjoyed talking to you about Shakespeare. Cool. All right. Well, so next time, maybe we'll talk more about Shakespeare. But don't forget that next week you will be able to listen to um, some of our discussion of the Dragons of Autumn Twilight on Wednesday. Yes. Because we have started that read through. Yep. So. Exciting stuff. You might be on to the second one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, go read something cool. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.